Hello, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. My name is uh, Roberto Solon. I am the Export Sales Manager with Hayward for Latin America and the Caribbean, and I'm going to be conducting the webinar today. Webinar today is going to be on filtration. We're going to do uh, some general overview and then some of uh, comparison between different types of filters that we use in our markets. So let's begin with a little bit of recaps as to the webinars that we have done so far. Uh, last uh, yesterday we had webinars on uh, variable speed pumps for those of you that were not able to attend please double check your emails because we are going to be sending out the uh, recording of that today we are going to be doing filtration and tomorrow is uh, heating gas heating so make sure to register if you haven't already done so and then next week we are going to be looking into uh, heat pumps lighting and water features and sanitization Remember that the webinars are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then the uh, following week, we are going to be going into automation and uh, automatic pool cleaners. So keep an eye on your emails in order to sign up because each of these webinars are an individual sign uh, registration. During today's webinars, if you have any questions, please use the questions module on this uh, GoToWebinar platform and make sure that whatever questions you have, write it down, and then at the end, we're going to go back and review any questions that you might have. For those of you that don't know uh, much about Hayward, Hayward was founded in 1925 by Irving Hayward. And just as a little bit of recap, uh, it was sold to a private equity firm in 2017, and we have uh, 10 manufacturing and distribution centers around the world. Now going into the uh, topic for today. Today's topic is uh, filtration. So we are going to do a lot of uh, filter media comparison, uh, comparison, the benefits between all of them and the uh, drawbacks from each of them. We are going to be looking into some of the uh, market trends and then how we can improve energy efficiency by uh, choosing a better filter for our pools. Then we are also going to be looking into uh, backwash, the benefits and the drawbacks of backwashing and then uh, filter sizing, appropriate filter sizing for each uh, application. And today we're going to be reviewing sand filters, cartridge, and uh, DE. Those are the most common filtration medias that we have available from Hayward for uh, residential or commercial swimming pools. For those of you that, that are not aware about the clarity, uh, clarity about the uh, uh, the debris that is able to hold, remember that DE filters, filters uh, down to five microns, around five microns. Obviously, the smaller the number, the greater the water quality that we're going to have, because the smaller the debris that the filters are going to be able to catch and, and, and take out of the, uh, of the uh, swimming pool. Then remember that for cartridge filters, the uh, debris retention is about 10 to 20 microns. And then for sand, it's 20 to 40 microns. We obviously have to keep in mind as well the backwash. DE and sand requires a backwash. Cartridge does not. And then also multiple valves. Both DE and sand require multiple valves and cartridge does not. Some of the market trends that we are seeing is people switching more and more into cartridge. And that is my personal favorite as well. By switching over into cartridge, we get... Uh, First of all, better filtration compared to sand, which is what most of us use on our uh, on, on our markets. Then we also get the benefit of uh, water conservation because remember we are not doing backwash, so all of that treated water from the pool we are not uh, wasting it or, or throwing it back into the uh, into the patio by doing backwashing. Cartridge filters doesn't require backwash, so we don't lose treated water and and the uh, and um, by the time that we clean up a cartridge just with the garden hose, it uses a, let, uh, a lot less water than when doing a, a backwash cycle. And then compared to DE, there's nothing to dispose because many times uh, many countries consider DE as a hazardous product. So we have to be careful on how to dispose of the DE. But with cartridge, we don't have that drawback either. So how can we improve energy efficiency with filtration? Even though the filter doesn't get plugged in into the electricity, but 
by choosing a different type of filtration media, it does improve our energy efficiency. So filters use energy, energy by restricting flow. So obviously when we are restric restricting flow, the, uh, the pump is going to have to work harder, it's going to have to work longer, it's going to overheat and it's going to use up energy. The uh, filter valves are also head hogs. What that means is that they are very inefficient. They create a lot of pressure that normally uh, that also goes back into energy consumption on your pump. And then the cartridge filters, they are the most efficient and we're going to go deeper into that and we're going to see some comparisons as to how cartridge filters help uh, improve energy efficiency in our pools. These are some of the backwash, the multiple valves that we have available. These are the side mount options, but we also uh, have available, obviously, uh, top mounts. And then it is important to keep in mind, when are we supposed to be doing a backwash or when are we supposed to clean our cartridge filter? Most people have as a rule, uh, well, I backwash once a week or once every two weeks, but that is not necessarily the case. Remember that all of our filters, let it be sand, cartridge or DE, all of them have a pressure gauge and that pressure gauge is going to tell us when we are supposed to backwash our filter or clean the uh, cartridge. And there's no need to do uh, backwashes unless it is required. Normally the recommended is a 10 PSI uh, difference, delta. So normally our pressure gauges, they have three needles on them. You have the black needle, which is going to tell us the pressure at the filter. And then we have both a green and a red that you are able to adjust by turning the knob. And then what we are going to do is when we first install a filter or when we first do a backwash or clean the cartridge, that black needle is going to go up to the working pressure. We're going to set, by turning that up, we're going to set our green needle uh, to match that black one. And then when the black needle goes all the way up to the red, that means it is time for us to do a backwash. This is important because that way we are not doing backwashing just for the sake of doing them, but we are doing it when the filter actually needs it. And that is going to help us as well with uh, water use and chemical usage as well. It is important to keep in mind that normally when the filter is clean, we don't want the, uh, the pressure to exceed about 20 PSI. So that is important because if on a clean filter, our black needle is above 20 PSI, then it means that we have a hydraulic issue. Either the pump is too big, the filter is undersized, or the, uh, or the plumbing on the return side is uh, undersized as well. And that's why our filter is working at such a high pressure. So if we are able to maintain a clean filter under 20 PSI, then that is going to be the best. And obviously, remember, it is going to go from 20 to 30 max when the filter is dirty. Remember that 10 PSI different, uh, delta in order to know when to do backwash. But then when we do the backwash, it should go back to the regular working pressure of no more than 20 PSI. Next, we're going to take a look at the classic multiple valves. Multiple valves, obviously, they have many twists and turns on the inside, and this is what makes them be less efficient compared to other filtration methods. And obviously, every time the water goes into these valves and it has to make a turn, that creates pressure, and that also creates, uh, it brings down our efficiency on the, uh, on the hydraulic side. So normally our multiple valves, we have uh, seven options. We have filter, backwash, waste, recirculate, rinse, close, and winter on the uh, top mount valves. Most of our markets don't require a uh, winter for winterization uh, because we don't, close the, we don't close the pools down on the, uh, on the winter months. But most, most commonly, obviously, we're going to use the filter, the backwash, the waste and the rinse uh, cycles. And here we can take a look and see the difference between multiple valves. If we have an inch and a half multiple valves, as we can see here, at 40 to 60 GPM, that is going to add about nine, uh, nine feet of, of head. If we, instead of doing inch and a half, we are able to upgrade our valve to a two inch, 
then we can see how that nine feet now goes down to four. So that helps us obviously be more efficient and create less pressure on our pump. Then if we look at the this second uh, row here, 70 to 80 GPM, we can see that a 70 to 80 GPM, a two inch valve is going to add about 10 feet of head as well. If instead of doing a standard back, uh, backwash valve multiport, we go to a slide uh, or push and pull valve, we can see that we get some uh, savings as well when it comes to the uh, feet of head that it adds into our system. Now, when we look into filters, it is important to do proper filter sizing. As uh, we saw yesterday on our pump presentation, remember that we size the pump to the filter and to the plumbing that we have as well and on the pool. And then we have to size the filter to the maximum flow of that pump. If it is a variable speed pump that we are using, then we have to size the filter to the maximum flow that that variable speed pump is able to provide. This is going to make sure that when the pump is running at maximum speed, that the filter is not creating uh, a flow restriction and, uh, and, and the pressure doesn't exceed the recommended working pressure either. Normally, when we size the, size the filter on the pumps, we also recommend about an eight hour turnover rate. And that is important because if we are just filtering our pool a couple of hours a day, then we have the pool sitting for 20 to 22 hours, just a stagnant water. And that is not something that is going to be beneficial to the pool or to the, uh, or to the uh, water uh, quality. And something that is universal about every filter is that the slower flow increases uh, filtration efficiency. So that is important because especially when we are recommending customers to go with variable speed pumps that we want to filter at lower speeds, then that is also going to help our filter be more efficient and be able to catch more of the debris. Here is some of the uh, filter recommendation and filter sizing for uh, DE filters. All of our filters on the tag, there's always going to be a maximum flow rate. Keep in mind that maximum flow rate because we never want to put a pump that exceeds the maximum flow rate of the filter, or we never want to put a filter that is too small for the maximum flow rate of the pump, because then obviously that's when we are going to be uh, a creating flow issues and increasing our total dynamic head. So keep in mind, always check on the filters, the maximum recommended flow. For example, on DE filters, we go anywhere between 24 square foot to 100 square foot. And the flow rate is on, the, on those filters is anywhere between 48 gallons per minute to 150 GPM. So keeping that in mind, if we have a, a 24 inch filter that is able to only uh, filter about 48 gallons per minute and we put a pump that does 80 or 90, then obviously that is a mismatch and that is going to create uh, filtration issues. In our market, obviously we're more familiar with uh, sand filters. And here we see an example of proper sizing for sand filters. A 21 inch sand filter is able to filter about 44 gallons per minute. And then obviously the bigger we go, we can go all the way up to 36 inch and that 36 inch is going to filter about 130 GPM, 130 gallons per minute. Obviously, the again, like we have mentioned already, the filter has to be sized to the maximum flow that the pump is able to give us. I see many times installation, for example, on a spa, to where you have a customer using a three horsepower pump, and then they put a 24 inch sand filter. Well, that 24 inch sand filter is only able to do 62 GPM and the pump easily can do 130. So that is a mismatch. Yes, you need a larger flow for the spa jets, but at the same time, your filter is, uh, is way undersized and it is just creating extra restriction on the flow of the pump and that pump is going to overheat and it is also going to go bad uh, prematurely. And then here, my favorite, which is uh, cartridge filters. Cartridge filters, we go anywhere between 100 to 700 square foot. And we can see that with cartridge filters at 100 square foot, maximum recommended flow is 100 GPM. And then we can go all the way up to 150 gallons per minute. Obviously, 
the larger that our surface area uh, on the filtration is, the more debris the cartridge filter is able to hold before you have to go in and, uh, and wash out the, uh, the, the cartridge elements. Now going more in depth, we uh, see here our sand filters, our Pro Series sand filters. Our Pro Series sand filter, remember we have top mount or side mount valves available all the way up to 36 inch. So if you are on a commercial installation or a pool that requires a, a larger flow, more flow, and uh, you want to do a 36 inch sand filter with a top mount in order to save space in the equipment room, we can actually do that. And we do have that, that option available. And also we have available the option of uh, side mounts. Here we see how a normal uh, sand filter works. The, the pump, the water from the pump goes on the top of the sand on the diffuser and the water is spread evenly ac across the sand bed. And then on the bottom, we have the laterals or, or the finger styles, uh, laterals to where all of that clean water goes back into the pool after it has gone through the filtration process. Some troubleshooting uh, ideas on sand filters. If let's say that your pool water is not clean enough, then we have to go back and see if it is a water chemistry issue, or maybe if you're backwashing too frequently, actually, that also doesn't help your pool uh, water quality. And then we also have to keep in mind that sand filters, the, the recommended, the, uh, the micron rating on these filters is 20 to 40 GPM, I'm sorry, 20 to 40 microns. So what that does is that all of these smaller debris the sand filter is just not going to be able to catch it. Doesn't matter what we do to it uh, if you're using sand. And then all of that small debris obviously is going to end up in the pool. And that's why many times uh, service techs, they, they have to use a lot of uh, clarifiers and a lot of chemicals in order to do what the sand filter is not able to do, which is clean those small, uh, smaller particles out of the water. And here you can see some of the other troubleshooting uh, recommendations for sand filters. We are going to be sharing this presentation so it is easy for you to take a look at this later. Just an overview of the sand filter, some of the pros and the cons. Uh, obviously the pros is uh, one of the oldest and most recognized filter media. What that means is most service guys know how to work it. Most uh, pool homeowners know how to use them as well. Uh, some of the cons that I don't like is obviously the filtration uh, quality is not the best and bug washing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, waste of water and there's also extra pressure uh, requires. Uh, keep in mind that these draw drawbacks or cons, it is not just for the Hayward sand filters. It is for sand filters in general. Doesn't matter what manufacturer. Uh, all of them have the same the same problems. Now, to help improve filtration with sand filters, we also have this uh, Pro Hayward Blue filtration media. What this filtration media does is replaces the sand on a conventional sand filter with this material, which is a cotton-like uh, material. And one bag of this Pro Hayward Blue replaces 100 pounds of regular sand. So obviously when it comes to servicing the filter, it's a lot easier. And, uh, and the good thing is that now the, uh, the filtration, instead of going 20 to 40 microns, you go down similar to a cartridge filter, five to 15 microns. So filtration quality is going to be better. It is not going to, uh, it is not going to be as, as good as cartridge because you still have a multiple valve that creates some, some back pressure into your system, but at the same time, you're, you are able to get a sand filter to filter better. And uh, when you're doing backwashing, it's a lot easier to do backwash because since this material is lighter, as soon as you put your valve in the backwash mode, it is able to lift and agitate the filter media in order for the dirt uh, to come out of the filter. So it makes it, makes it easier for you to do a service on your uh, existing sand filters as well. And here are some of the, of the uh, recommendations. For example, let's take a look at a 20, uh, 22 inch sand filter that normally use uh, 250 pounds of sand. 
then you can just replace that with two and a half pounds or two and a half bags of this uh, filtration media. So it is a lot easier, especially when you look into the bigger filters, you know, a 36 inch sand filter that requires 700 pounds of sand. Now, instead of logging around and working with 700 pounds of sand, you can just use seven pounds or seven bags of this, this filtration media in order to replace the, uh, the sand on your filter. So better water quality, less restriction on the flow, and at the same time, it's a lot easier to work with. And, and at the end of the life cycle, life cycle is about five years. At the end of the life cycle, that filtration media is, is actually uh, recyclable. So you can just recycle it at the end of the five years and there's no waste going to the uh, landfills. Next, we're going to jump into our cartridge filters. Our swim clear line of cartridge filters, like I said already, is my favorites. And uh, filtration quality with cartridge is uh, 10 to 20 microns. The other benefit that it has is that there's no uh, backwash uh, required. So it makes uh, it makes a lot of, uh, it, it, it saves on the water, it saves on the chemicals of the pools. And at the same time, if you are pairing this up with a variable speed pump, then it is a great match. Because remember, we are adding very little back pressure into the pump, so the pump is able to work at lower speeds than it will do with a standard uh, multiple valve. With these units, we have sizes anywhere between uh, 225 to 700 uh, square feet in filtration media. So it makes it ideal as well, even for large residential or even commercial pools, in order to put one of these uh, cartridge filters. So why do we say it is a good partner in energy savings? On this uh, on this slide, on this table down here, we are comparing the average feet of head, the total dynamic head that the, that the filter adds into our circulation. So if we're using a 60 gallons per minute, we're using one of these cartridge filters, it adds about only 2.3 feet of head. When we compare that into a sand filter with a multiple valve at the same 60 gallons per minute, now that adds about 17.3 feet of head. So obviously when we're looking at a pump curve and we are able to bring down that, bring down that pump curve by uh, 15 feet of head, now we can see that our pump is actually going to give us much more flow and it is going to, it's not going to be as restrictive on the pump in order to save energy as well. And this is the same comparison just in, uh, in a table form. On this first chart that we see here, it is a sand filter with a two inch multiport. And in the second chart, it is a quad, one of these uh, four cartridge uh, filters that we can use uh, at the same 50 gallons per minute. We can see that it only adds about two feet of head at 50 gallons per minute. And when we compare the sand filter with a multiple valve at 50 gallons per minute, we can see that it adds 10 feet of head. So obviously it is quite a substantial savings. And then if we go even higher at higher GPMs, then we see that the difference actually increases even more. Let's say at 90 gallons per minute, the, uh, the sand filter with a multiport adds about 30 feet of head, as we can see here on this, uh, on this uh, curve. And at the same 90 gallons per minute, the cartridge filter adds about nine feet of head. So it is one third of the restriction that we will get with a sand filter and a multiple valve. Here we can see how this quad, these uh, four cartridge uh, filters look on the inside. We have a, a manifold on the top and the bottom that holds the four cartridge filters. So it creates less restriction. And at the same time, we increase the, the efficiency of the filter because now we have more filter media in order to hold the, the dirt. And the service doesn't have to be done as often as you will do by going with a smaller uh, cartridge filter. We also have large unions on these filters, two by two and a half inch. So it is easy to plumb and it is efficient on the hydraulic design as well. 
Now we're going to look into our swing clear single element cartridge filters. This is actually my favorite when it comes to uh, residential, residential filtration. We have 100, 150, and 200 square foot, anywhere between 100 gallons per minute to 120 gallons per minute. This is actually the most efficient cartridge filter that we have ever made. It has a pressure and air relief that is actually the pressure gauge and the air release is actually embedded into the uh, the lid. So it is protected. It is not knocked off or, or broken easily many times uh, with a standard pressure gauge that are exposed in order for it to get damaged. This one, does, that doesn't happen. It has an easy lock, easy to disassemble ring in order to service it. And it has big handles in order for you to open the ring and also take out the, uh, the lid in order to get access into the cartridge. So it makes it really easy to service the cartridge and, uh, and less time uh, while doing it. We can see here that that filter is also a great match with either single speed or variable speed pumps because since the inlet into the filter is elevated, when we are coming out of our pump, we are just using 190 to go directly into the filter. With previous models of cartridge filters, you had to go all the way to the bottom. So the more 90s that we put into a hydraulic installation, the less efficient it is going to be because every 90 creates a restriction. With this, only 190 design makes it a lot more efficient and less restriction on our pump. This filter also comes with unions, two by two and a half, which uh, also help reduce uh, the uh, total dynamic head that it adds into our system. Here we also see a comparison of sand filter with a two-inch multiple valve on the first graph. We, here we are looking at 50 gallons per minute, and then we are also looking at 80 gallons per minute. And we are comparing that with the restriction that the swim clear single element adds at the same 50 gallons per minute and 80 gallons per minute. When we look at the first uh, 50 gallons per minute, we can see that the sand filter adds about 10 feet of total dynamic head. When we look into our cartridge at 50 gallons per minute, it adds less than one foot of total dynamic head. So obviously sand adds 10, cartridge less than one. And when then when we look at the same ex example at 80 gallons per minute, we can see that the cartridge filter adds two feet of, uh, feet of head and 80 gallons per minute, our sand filter adds about 20, 22, 23 feet of head. So we can see that it is a, quite a, a substantial savings when it comes to the head loss in our system by going with cartridge instead of going with sand. And this is important because remember the pump curves, if we're able to cut down 20 feet of head, that pump is going to give us much better flow than it would by, uh, by going with a sand filter. And some of the pros and the cons of cartridge filters, it is an economically efficient filter medium. Uh, when, you look in a, when, when you look at price of similar uh, flow ratings in sand and similar flow ratings in cartridge, and you can see that cartridge is actually quite competitive. Cartridge doesn't require backwash, as we have discussed already, so no water loss, no chemical loss out of the pool. And uh, some of the cons is uh, it is not as good uh, as DE when it comes to uh, uh, the, the fil filtration, uh, the microns that it's able to hold, but it's still much better than, than sand. And then the cartridge has to be replaced about more often. It has to be replaced, uh, we recommend about a year, year and a half in order to keep the, the cartridge working at a good performance. Normally sand, most customers take three to five years in order to replace the sand. So with cartridge, yes, you do, you do change it about a year, year and a half. Some of the troubleshooting for cartridge filters, uh, Normally, the let's take a look, for example, at high pressure in the filter. Obviously, it is a dirty element or some sort of valve that, has, that is blocking the, uh, the return. And then if you have debris returning into your pool, then obviously your filter media is broken somewhere, and that is allowing the water to pass through unfiltered. 
Remember, if you have any question during the pres this presentation, just uh, write it down and we are going to uh, review it at the end of the presentation. Now we get into uh, the ProGrade and our DEP500, which is the, our DE filters. Those units uh, come between 24 to 72 square foot. And we also have a high efficiency valve that we are going to be seeing here. Remember the benefit with DE is that the filtration goes down to five microns, around five microns. So that makes a very clear, very clean water. And the DEP 500 series, instead of using uh, the, the standard DE grids, which is the half moon style, this one actually uses a cartridge style DE element. So it makes it easier as well to service in the in the future because instead of working with all of those half moon DE grids, now it's just a cartridge style, which is a lot easier to replace and a lot easier to service. This one comes anywhere between 60 to 100 square foot, and the flow ratings is between 120 to 150 gallons per minute. So that filter also comes, uh, it also has this valve available, which is the selector flow. And we can see how this selector flow reduces the pressure. Instead of using a standard multiple valve, which we see here on the black line, the selector flow, uh, let's take an example at 80 gallons per minute. It also adds less than one foot of uh, head when compared to a, a standard multiple valve at 80 gallons per minute it adds about six foot of head so we can see that obviously that is a substantial savings in energy as well because our pump is not going to be working as hard in order to pump the water that we require here we can see on the inside that selector flow high efficiency valve how it is a direct connection a direct flow inside the uh, the filter without having to do that normal uh, turns and twist of a standard multiple valve. This selector flow valve can be used both in the ProGrade and on the DEP500 filters. But remember, this selector flow valve is only for DE filters. It cannot be used on sand. Some of the pros and cons of DE. Uh, obviously, as we have already discussed, the best uh, filtration quality when it comes to uh, filters for swimming pools. But some of the cons is that when you're doing backwash, it is recommended to use a separation tank. The separation tank, it, it allows you when you're doing backwash not to be uh, throwing the DE into the uh, the patio or, or, or the waste of of whatever waste method you're using, you're actually separating the DE and you can reuse that DE or you can dispose of it in a safe manner because we don't want to just throw DE into the customer's patio either. Here we can see some of the troubleshooting for DE. Uh, the first uh, troubleshooting that we have here is uh, DE, the DE powder returns into the pool. This is common and, and it is normal when you first charge a DE filter with the powder. Some of it actually is going to go back into the pool and that's fine and that is normal. After a couple of uh, circulation cycles, all of that DE is going to go back into the grids and, and it's going to stay on the grids. So we don't have to worry about that some of the DE initially goes into the pool as the, uh, as the pump does its cycle that is going to come back into the, uh, into the filter itself. And now we're going to take a look at some of our commercial filters. We have commercial filters in sand. This uh, sand model comes anywhere between 30 to 36 inch. And flow ratings anywhere between 98 to 143 gallons per minute. It comes with two inch connections. So it makes it easier for you to plumb it in. And then the main difference between our residential line and our commercial line of sand filters is that the commercial is actually fiberglass with gel coat in order to protect uh, from uh, UV rays and also the the manifold on the inside is quite different the uh, the the laterals that we can see on the on the bottom of this picture actually shows that the sun filters has a much better coverage when it comes to the laterals on the bottom so your water is going to flow more efficiently than you would do with a standard uh, residential units 
And then also keep in mind that for our sand filters, we have a two inch and we also have a three inch multiple valve. That three inch multiple valve is a good option when we are doing a, tan we are doing a tandem installation. Let's say that we have a, a high flow three horsepower or even a five horsepower pump with three inch plumbing. Instead of you having to do individual pump and filter configurations, you can go from your five horsepower pump into your three inch multiple valve. And that three inch multiple valve is actually able to work with two sand filters at the same time. So instead of having to create a manifold, a manifold with butterfly valves and so on, now you can use a multiple valve in order to plumb two filters into one pump makes it a lot easier. And when you're doing backwashing, it is just one valve that the customer or the service tech has to work with instead of having multiple valves to open and close. And also remember that for commercial installations, we do have a cartridge filter as well. Remember the 700 square foot cartridge filter that we uh, discussed earlier. Yeah, it goes up to 150 GPM. The good, the good thing with that is that now you're able to replace uh, sand filters with cartridge. The other benefit is that on your equipment room, the cartridge filter actually uses less space than a 36 inch sand filter. So if you have an equipment room that you're tight in space, the cartridge is a very good option in order for you to replace that. You're going to get better filtration, less pressure, and less space used up on the uh, equipment room. This cartridge filter also comes with eight individual uh, individual cartridges inside. So you can see here on the picture that it shows four, but actually this, this is a stack uh, cartridge, one on top of the other. So when, you're, when it comes time to do service, it's a lot easier for you to be working with a shorter cartridge instead of working with such a, a long one if it was only one unit. Very good option for uh, commercial pools where they want to either save water, save chemicals, or improve their filtration. And remember, by improving filtration, it, it takes less chemicals in order to maintain the pool. You don't have to be using as much clarifiers, as much chemicals in order to take out what the filter is not able to filter out. And just as a recap on our filtration lineup, Remember that we have uh, sand filter options on our Pro Series. We have the DE filter models. Uh, remember that filters down to uh, five microns. And then we have our cartridge filters, 10 to 20 microns. And then we have the commercial filter options. If you have any questions, remember to write it down and we will review it at the end of this presentation. And I also want to remind you once again of the webinars that we are having uh, this week and next week. Tomorrow, remember that we are going to have a webinar on uh, gas heaters. And then the following week uh, is going to be heat pumps, lighting and water features, and sanitization. Sanitization is going to include so chlorinator, UV, and ozone. So you're going to get a, a view as to all of the sanitization methods that we recommend and that we offer. And then the week after, we are going to be digging in into automation and uh, pool cleaners, automatic cleaners. If you have any questions, you can also get in touch with us. My name is uh, Roberto Sablon, Export Manager for Latin America and the Caribbean. You can see my email here. And then we also have uh, Manny Ixlawak. You can see the email at the bottom. Manny is our Technical Manager for Latin America and the Caribbean as well. And uh, any technical questions, any support that you need, let us know. If you have a project that you are considering uh, switching over to a different filtration media, let us know and we can help you size it as well. Let's see if we have any questions here. Okay, no questions right now, so that's good. Thanks for joining us. It means that our explanation was uh, very clear, which is good to hear. Thanks for joining us and remember to uh, Join us tomorrow during the webinar. Have a great day and see you next time.